Question 26 is a transformations question. It starts off with this translate shape, p by the vector 5 minus 2. So this question, you've got to draw something on there. And then it goes on to the part b, where you've got to describe a transformation. Now, describing transformations is a grade c topic, but um, just translating a shape by a vector is a grade, c, uh, grade d topic. So I've mixed this one up with two parts. So, translate a shape by the vector um, 5 minus 2. Now, translations are the, probably the one transformation that the name is not familiar to what it actually does. So, reflections, clearly you reflect in a mirror line. Rotations is spinning stuff around. Enlargements is making things bigger and smaller. But translate uh, means to, to pick the shape up and slide it across. Now, the vector 5, 2 means this is going 5 across, and minus 2 means it's going down 2. The top number is always how far across you go. The bottom number is always how far up or down you go. Um, if it's negative, you go to the left. If it's negative on the bottom, you go down. Positive goes to the right on top or up on the, on the bottom. So what's happening is this shape is being picked up and moved 5 to the right and 2 down. Now, when you do these transformations, I, I always recommend you don't think about the whole shape. You just pick one corner of the shape, one point, and then do your transformation on that point, and then hopefully you should be able to figure out where the rest go. So we're going five to the right. So one, two, three, four, five to the right, and then two down, one, two. So that point there is going to move to here. Now we can do the same with another point. Let's try this point. Uh, one, two, three, four, five to the right, and one, two, down. And from there, we should be able to, to draw the rest of the shape. Now, I'm not going to be able to do it very well um, with my pen, so that's actually be sensible and use a ruler, uh, a straight line tool. I've got one available. What do I do? Let's use a colour green, I think. Okay, so. That's one side, and then the bottom is going to be there, and then it's going to go up one, then across one, and then up two, and then back to the beginning. It's a little bit better, it's not fantastic. Um, but that's our new shape, and we call that P dashed. So that shape there has been moved across five and down two. That's a translation. Okay, part B, describe the single transformation maps A onto B. Now this looks a little bit blurry because I've used um, an overlay to be able to show you what the transformation is. Now um, the number of marks available for the question is a clue into what the transformation is. Um, if it's three marks it's probably a rotation because a rotation requires three things. You need to say it's a rotation, you need to say um, uh, how far, so the angle, and direction, so is it clockwise or anti-clockwise? If it's necessary, if it's 180 degrees, you don't need that. We do need the angle. And then we finish off that one with um, the center. You need to know where the center of rotation is. So there's one mark for each part of that. If it was a translation, as we just seen, we get one mark for the word translation and one mark for the vector, whatever it is, x, y, how far across, or up or down. If it's a reflection, you get one mark for the word reflection and you get one mark for the line of reflection. So if you were reflecting this vertical line, um, you could say that was the y-axis or the um, x equals zero line. So these two, only, and you only get two marks for, whereas rotations is worth three marks. Um, hopefully you can see this as rotation. Translations are always going to be the same way up. Reflections are um, fairly easy to spot because they look like reflections, but rotations um, if we can see this one spinning around, hopefully it's going to spin on top of itself. Um, and you can see that that has gone round half a turn to get back to there. Now, how would you do this on an exam to figure out what it was? But if you figured out it's a rotation, what you do is get a piece of tracing paper. Imagine that square is a tracing paper. Um, you trace the shape A, because you're mapping A onto B. Trace the shape A, and then put your pen or pencil at certain any point where you think the center is and then spin it around until you find one that works. And when you put it on zero, 01, you'll see that it will spin pretty much on to be there. So what we need there are the word rotation, 
you can't put spin or turn, it's got to be the word rotation. 180 degrees, it doesn't matter if it's anti-clockwise or clockwise because it's the same both way. It wouldn't matter if you wrote it either. And the center is going to be um, 0, 1. 0 cross 1 up to this point here. Okay, and that gets you three marks. It's certainly worth just having a guess if you're not sure with the, with the name. That's always worth a mark if you get the right one. And if you go in rotation, you should be able to get the angle. The center is probably the tricky bit.